Good Sunday evening. My name is Daniel Young. I'm the owner and founder of Adaptive Perspective and the Adaptive Perspective social media platforms. These ongoing videos uh, really are just about using our closed end fund investment strategy. And if you want the full methodology and our 12 steps to financial freedom, then head over to Facebook and check, and check out my page called Adaptive Perspective Navigate Your Finances, where I give you the entire framework for free. Uh, this is an unedited video. Who knows what you'll hear in the background as I film these in my house. Cat's currently on a terror rampage because no one's playing feather with him. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a financial strategist. I don't speak like a herd. I walk in limited company. Sometimes I walk alone. And the new one is this. I hope it's not, to be honest, but it might be a little longer because we finally saw some changes in the market. So what changed? Well, the market at large finally realized we're either in a recession or heading toward one. Data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor uh, revealed some pretty troubling signs for the overall economy, with unemployment blowing past expectations 4.3 in July, highest since October 21. So their data keeps going. So over the past year, 1.2 million native-born Americans have lost jobs, while 1.3 million foreign-born workers gained employment. Since July 23, 311,000 more people are working multiple jobs, and over 500,000 additional Americans are now forced to take part-time jobs due to economic pressure. Troubling data, but did you catch the lingo? It's, it is cloak-and-dagger lingo. You've got native-born Americans and foreign-born workers. And my 13-year-old my caught the lingo. They're combining foreign-born and illegals into the same category and purposefully skewing the numbers. And that's insidious. You've got illegals competing with Americans for jobs, wages, housing, food, and gas. If everything is constant, and competition goes up, the price of everything goes up. And inflation is still high. And we know that for two key reasons. One, we don't trust the Fed, uh, even when they say inflation is 2% or lower. And two, our grocery bills and our power bills and gas bills and everything bills haven't gone down. And somebody, somebody thought to ask the Biden-Harris group or the Biden-Harris regime about this and hope for an honest answer. And they got one, but it doesn't sound like. It. So somebody asked uh, Kamala Harris about this. And the response was, well, so they got asked, what do you think about all this data about the labor market and, you know, cost of everything? And the response was, Bidenomics is working. So why is everything higher? Why is inflation running rampant? which isn't as high as it's been, like Jimmy Carter saw 12% inflation. So 4%, but that's if you trust the Fed. All of our prices are still 10% plus. So maybe it is 10% inflation, but we'll never know because the Fed's lying about it. But the response, Bidenomics is working, which means they want this to happen. Now I get I don't generally make politically based videos. It's market advice, but the reality is you have to understand the overall uh, investment model flows from the top down. So everything from the top, regardless of who's leading or who's leading the country, flows downhill. And all of us feel the impact of that across all sectors of life. So the response that Bidenomics is working means that they want all this to happen. It also means you have a choice in the upcoming election cycle. You, you really do. You get to choose the lifestyle and the economy you want. I'll be the first to tell you there is not a perfect candidate. Okay. It, it's like, and I'm going to butcher the meme. It's like moving your piece on the chessboard to determine how you want to live your life and determine the lifestyle that you want and that you want for your kids. So do you want to be turned upside down and shaken down for every last penny? That's Harris or whoever else they throw up there. And if you want a thriving economy, lower taxes, 
more money in your pocket, higher wages, homegrown energy, and lower gas prices, which gives you more money to spend or save or invest or do whatever with. Well, that's Trump. So it's an easy choice, but it's still your choice to make. So regardless of who's leading the country, you and I can also take an active approach on our finances and choose not to sit on the sidelines and hope for the best. I mean, we're still going to have to navigate the day to day. We're still going to have to, you know, ride the waves of the stock market. But there's more to it than just randomly shaking the dice and hoping you end up with what you want. So, and I'll say this again later. I talk about types of income on Facebook. I, I look at personal, portfolio, and passive and how they all fit together. I talk about portfolio income and strategy on YouTube. I, I host content on Pinterest. I, I'm thinking about adding back and rebranding my TikTok to talk about everything strategy, finances, and life. Because as we... it. My Facebook page is Navigate Your Finances, but it really is navigating your finances in life and seeing how it all fits together. And my goal, I mean, I, I love talking strategy, but my goal really is just to help people and help people figure it out and help people figure out how to get to their version of financial freedom. So <laughs> back to news. So uh, I, I get a more than weekly emails, but I get emails from Morris Invest, who's a, a real estate group. And they angle the changes from last week this way. The S&P 500 was down almost a half percent heading into the final trading session for the month, making it the worst July since 2014. And it's unexpected because according to them, July is typically a strong month for the S&P 500. And the increase may, like a significant increase in the market might not return for any time soon. So for their data, historically returns are modest in August and they dip sharply in September, often more than 2%. The S&P is seen as the benchmark for the overall stock market and the unusual decline in July has sparked some concern among shareholders or stockholders. And they, Morris Invest looks more at the real estate angle of things, so they encourage people to invest in investment properties as opposed to investing in the stock market. And while I get their angle, I operate on four sides of that fence. And you would say a fence has two sides, and I would say it has four. It's got a foundation. Those would be steps one through four in our 12 steps to financial freedom. They talk about investment properties that probably be on one actual side of the fence like on a neighbor's side of the fence, that's step nine in the 12 steps. The stock market, which might be my side of the fence, is step 10. And the top rail is, is accomplishing our why. It's the driving force behind everything we're doing. It's what we're hoping to reach. And that's the creation of generational wealth. So yes, we bought an investment property back in February. And six months later, it's up 3%. And it's just going to keep going up with inflation supposedly coming down, which doesn't look like it is. That's if you believe the Fed. But if rates are dropping, and they are already, but if rates are dropping, the cost of real estate will just go up. Now, you could argue that it's not actually that cost, but it doesn't negate the reality that the cost of everything home-wise home is going to go up with a, with a lower rate mark. And in the market, while we want returns and we want increases and in capital gains in the market, we're in the market for consistent dividends and increasing dividends. Because remember, we're supplementing or uh, fully funding retirement on dividends and not using or not selling off the principle of our portfolio. Why? Look at my past videos, because I've done several videos on why that 4% will fail and sucks. Um, we're not playing that game. So we want price increases and we're going to deal with the ups and downs, but we want price increases. We want gains, but we're in it for the dividends. And the ignorant herd is mostly unaware of dividends unless they're whatever single stock investment carries a dividend, right? If you're in the S and P, if, I, if you're in the S and P or the, Yeah, it's really the S&P 505, but if you're in the S&P 500, 
you're lucky if your company pays a dividend and if they throw a 2% dividend, you're happy with it. That's not us, right? Dividends are not on the herd's radar. They're just hoping NVIDIA climbs higher. Right now it's kind of going down or it's really going down. So when the market spooks on supposedly unexpected data, those newbies spook and scatter faster than cockroaches when the lights turn off. And the ignorant herd, thanks to their talk show supposed experts, those circle junkies had zero ideas about the R word. And we saw that Friday. The labor data was finally higher or worse than anticipated. And their advisors threw out the recession talk and those newbie investors freaked and withdrew money from the market. And then more, more people got scared and took money out of the market. Then more people realized Google is suffering and the shockwave hit the tech bubble. And people I read are actually saying the tech bubble, the tech bubble might finally pop, which is crazy because there are people who are projecting a tech rally for the next two to three years, not us. Okay, we've been anticipating the tech bubble. But I, I honestly don't know if it's popped per se or if it's just like if it had the correction and it's just gonna it gonna get a quick rebound. I mean, pending who you read, a correction could last a couple months, might last a couple weeks. Nobody knows. Everything's different, right? So I, I don't know if it's popped. I do know our buy window is reopened again, thanks to the fear territory. So that CNN fear, fear and greed index is important. It's not, it's not an end-all be-all signal, but it is a good thermostat check on the market. So it's an, it's, if it's an extreme greed, yes, it's kind of the buy and hold. You better demand a discount. You can buy, but it's going to be an elevated price versus when it's in, in fear and extreme fear. That's a really great time to buy. So, the regular CEF discounts that we see get giant. And then we scrape, we scoop. Uh, you get to see me make uh, mistakes on raw, on raw video. But the, the regular closed in funds, those discounts get huge. And then we scoop, we scoop deals, we scoop dividends while the herd runs for cover. And knowing that the Fed is hinting at a rate cut in September, and now some firms are, are predicting multiple cuts this year, we can we can use the fear to our advantage, right? Buy in fear, things are lower, things are cheaper, you get a better dividend. The herd is scared. They're not jacking up prices anymore. And by the, ter by the time momentum builds back into the market, the herd will jack up prices again, right? And then we end up riding the wave like we have been. Now, one Fed rate cut doesn't change the strategy. There's not much difference between 6.75 and 6.5, but three cuts, right? And 6% rates is a little different. And right now, the national average is already below six and a half on, on new mortgages. So three rate cuts could drop us into the upper fives. And that's still higher than 2.7 or uh, two and seven eighths. Uh, it's really, I mean, five and a half, 5.75, that's still higher than two and seven eights, uh, but it's also not the seven plus percent we saw earlier this year. But in the long game, I mean, if we're parsing numbers, right, we're splitting hairs, 5% is still higher than what we've seen in recent years. I mean, it's a lot, it's, that's double my, my home mortgage, right? So the fixed income game is still on. It just means we have to be even more choosy when we sift the data. So, and all of that finally brings me back to closed-in funds. Why do I like closed-in funds? Discounts, because who wants to pay full price? Amazing 8% plus, or 8% plus dividends that you can, you, can, you can pick when they pay. Quarterly, I like monthly, quarterly, semi-annual. I don't know why you would want it annual. Um, opportunities across every sector. Low risk, super low risk. Right. And a lot better payouts compared to single stock investments. Improved upside as those discounts close. And then you get access through varied accounts and platforms. Our Morgan Stanley die, 
our, our Morgan Stanley guy does not like closed in funds. I have no idea why, because they pay a lot better dividends than where we're invested with him. But that doesn't mean he couldn't invest into them. And that quite honestly, it's the main reason why we're looking at switching up that account, right? Because our money's missing out on dividends, which means we're missing out on dividends, which means he's missing out on increased money because he gets paid based on how he does. Uh, yeah, but I digress. So where does that leave us? The Morgan Stanley conundrum is a problem for another day, right? But for now, let's revisit our strategy. I know ours. Do you know yours? See the big picture, play the long game, right? The market looks forward like a stumbling toddler looking for a lost toy. It means we buy the best deals for now with the long-term game in mind. And even when the long-term game includes the possible doom and gloom and the ups and downs and the wild swings between extreme fear and extreme greed, or when the herd freaks out about a recession. So instead of being weighed down by the swings, we use the swings, right? Thursday, we, if you look on that fear and greed index, Thursday, we were maybe middle of the green. And by end of day Friday, we were almost in extreme fear. That's a pretty huge swing because it's newbie investor swan. We didn't mass sell off our portfolio. We're looking at selling at looking at selling some stuff, taking advantage of the time being. But it wasn't a mass sell-off. It, it's like it's like throttle on your car is that is that ticker hits past neutral and finally hits greed. It's like these newbie investors are like, oh my gosh, we need to pile into this because that's a great idea. And then whatever data comes in, like a recession, people have less to spend. So they pull all their money out of the market because they don't want to lose anything. Well, then that causes more people, right? And more people, more people. And then you end up with this giant swing into fear and extreme fear. And I'm not saying people aren't scared. That's not the point. The point is these newbie investors, these green investors are swinging the market and their talk show people are encouraging it. So that leads me to say, you have to think for yourself. You can listen to all the advice out there, but you cannot be steered by the herd. And their advisors, if you're listening to their advisors and taking their advisors advice, you need some better advisors. You can listen to them and see where the herd is going, but I would go opposite of the herd, right? Got to think for yourself. You got to have a strategy. Got to be able to sift the data. Quite honestly, we keep track of the herd, and then we find deals where the herd isn't or where the herd is scared to invest. And then last, we use our closed-end fund system because that strategy sifts all the data. It takes favoritism out of the mix. I, I have favorite funds, but if those funds don't meet, meet the metric, then they don't get on the list. So you apply the system, and we use our code, and we let it work. What is the code? It's the Barbosa line. It's the code is more of what you call guidelines and actual rules. Know your strategy, know your targets. Use the bigger scheme data. So you take this grandiose macro data and you condense it into how it impacts you, right? We buy historic discounts, which means you have to do the work or you let me do the work for you. But I'm doing the work for me. Use my work for you. We focus on consistent and rising dividend payers. And how those dividend, how those dividends are paid matters. On the company side, yes, can they cover the dividend? But also on our side, are they paid monthly or quarterly or semi-annual or annual or never? Right? I I like a monthly setup right now. Quarterly stuff is good depending on what you buy, but I like monthly consistent dividends. Uh, and then last, you want to be mindful of the dividend yield. Okay, the average the average in the S and P five hundred is between three and four. We'll say like three and a half percent. That's below inflation, so you're automatically losing money because your dividend isn't high enough, and you're losing money on the uh, overall increase or return of capital. Like if Apple gains ten percent in five years, you're losing money because of inflation. 
So, and because their dividend doesn't pay well. So our focus has been 9% plus. And I think that I want to say the individual brokerage, like our individual account is above 10% yield. I want to say our uh, Roth account is above 12% yield and, it, uh, yield and it's consistent dividends. So the focus is 9% plus unless there's a really good reason to buy something else. So of all that said, has the target list changed? Not really. We're still targeting fixed income. We're just being choosy with the stuff. And we were already choosy with the stuff. So we target fixed income. We look at bonds, loans, and real estate, and then specific stock funds. And the only real difference is tech gets back on the list because tech is, whether uh, whether correction or pop bubble, right? Tech is down. So I might not buy it tomorrow, but it's going to get back on the list. And I don't know if it drops more, then it's a really good time to buy it. So <clears throat> let's see where the bargains are for the week. And then let's see who's got the greatest discounts because we want to play the long game and use the strategy and the code to guide us and optimize our results. So here we go. Let me share my screen. Yes, the Zoom screen, this screen. So this got a complete update over the weekend. Uh, every fund got price updated. Uh, I went back through the targets. I looked at all the data. And thanks to whatever we saw, uh, correction or slide, uh, it significantly shortened the target list. I mean, significantly. We were maybe five, maybe like two or three past the screen in previous weeks. Uh, so really quick, triple asterisk is a buy alert. It's, and it's related to that one fund. It's not related to any other fund on the list. Uh, I look at the, the overall historical discount, but I look at the five-year discount, and then that triple asterisk has to be double the historical uh, and then greater than the five year. And then if, if it's a newer company or rebranded company, there's a little grace in that, uh, newer company, there's a little grace in that older company. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much a stickler to this. Even if it's off by 0.1, it doesn't, it doesn't meet the metric. So uh, two would be dollar cost average based on what we already own. And then one is tracking for any number of reasons. So we take our triple asterisk list. We come to here. I've added a column. So, right. So the stuff that we currently own and what price it would be. Let's shift that over to what we currently own. <laughs> so we own everything in light blue and everything in medium blue. And this is 50-50 because we own 50 shares in both funds. So first things first, we sort out not monthly. Normally it's like this, but it's an already short list. So we sort out not monthly. Next, we look at yield. So I've said this before, I will say it again. This one's going to stay on the list simply because it is the greatest discount. We'd be fools to ignore it. Should we buy it? That's a discussion for later. But it's going to stay on the list, at least for now. And if we scale these back and quickly go over this list, so a dollar invested would be an actual dollar invested in this company versus it's a dollar for a dollar. Versus if you scroll to the opposite end, oop, I scaled it back. It would be a dollar sixty-five 
for every dollar invested for this company. We don't pay premium. We only buy discount. In fact, I did a video for about a, two weeks from now about a fund that very rarely hits discount. And it's currently at a lower premium than what it's been in years past. And even though it, it's 4% premium, so it'd be like a dollar four, we don't buy premium at all. So instead of buying that premium, I suggest a, a similar stock portfolio that's currently on discount. So this one is almost 44% off. We'll say it's 53. Or we'll say it's uh, 54. So we'll say it's 53. Uh, so it's, it's like spending 47 cents for every dollar invested. Uh, it's almost like you're getting two. So we would be fools to not keep it on the list. And then everything that's not nine gets ditched. Well, besides that one. So what stays? Well, I like the idea of buying this now that it's a lot cheaper. Um, let's see. Some things I know, some things I don't. And yes, this is our actual portfolio, 7.092. You'll be 7.1, if that's the O, 608, HFRO, 6.3275. So I'm tempted to buy this. But I also want to see if it's going to slide further. Um, at, I mean, the old adage, as rates drop, bond prices go up. But the same is true for stocks. So with the tech market sliding, whether by correction or popping, um, I, I don't want to buy a heavily laden portfolio that's focused on tech until... I'm more confident it's close to the bottom. And there, it's not like you can time the market. I mean, we could open tomorrow, the market could open tomorrow, and it could skyrocket a dollar, right? Which would mean everybody was wrong again about the tech correction. Uh, but it, with the volatility we're seeing in the market, it I quite honestly would like to see if it slides a little further. Uh, same is true for this company. I would like to buy that company. I mean, it's down. I think twenty cents from Friday, which is not a huge, which is not a huge thing in the long run. It's not it, but as much as I'm tempted to buy that company tomorrow, it's front loaded with tech. It's but Alphabet, not so much. I mean, it's three percent of its portfolio, but it's front loaded with tech. And I want to see if the market continues to slip before I buy it. So if I'm not going to buy that, I'm not going to buy that. And Meggie it is a great little utility company. Uh, when I say little, but it, it's not little. It's a great utility company. But utility and oil are higher right now. So it's not going to be on our radar. I think this could be on our radar by end of week. This might be on our radar by end of week, maybe next week, but not this week, or at least not tomorrow morning. And then of these portfolios, that's a buy right, so they juice their portfolio. These are too, but quite honestly, I mean, I've looked at all these portfolios. I like their portfolio and how they're set up. They're all similarly invested to a degree. Uh, but if I can get this one cheaper and it pays a better dividend, then I'd rather get it cheaper. And that leaves us with this. And that's kind of, MBSG is tech-based. A lot of this is tech-based. So it's not going to make it for Monday morning, but it might make it for the end of the week. So, But for Monday morning, that leaves us with this. So this is still accurate. 
even if we see three rate cuts between now and December, which I think would be crazy. Um, I mean, the Fed has slow rolled advancing the economy. And some people think they've slow rolled it too much. Um, I, I don't know if that's accurate or not. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of the Fed in general. Um, but such is life right now. So it's what do we do in this current economy that's best for the long term? Not it's using the short term current situation to set us up best for the long term. So as much as I'm tempted by the tech stocks and the tech focus, I like BRW for a couple, well, really several reasons. I, I y'all know I like sets of 50, but I also like this round number idea. Um, uh, or round hundred idea. I also like how BRW is changing the closed end fund world for the shareholders. They're forcing changes in these bigger companies to cut the bloat and focus on shareholders and, and paying shareholders more. I like that. But also having just seen their recent uh, portfolio release, they're invested. Yes, I, they're, they're invested in closed end funds. They're also invested in crypto. And that's an area I just don't understand. Um, but there's growing in, there's growing interest. I mean, there was growing interest four years ago in crypto, but there's really growing interest now in crypto. So <clears throat> as a kind of a backdoor play in crypto, I can invest in VRW. Uh, the sister funds. This one slid a little. I mean, this one didn't change the last, well, didn't negatively change last week. People are still uncertain about this. I see HFRO as, with a lot of potential because a lot of their stuff is not currently online and going. Uh, so in a lower rate market or say rates drop, a lot of their stuff comes online next year and subsequent when, subsequent years. So in a lower rate market, they have a, and they have a chance to kind of catch back up and make their share, well, not me, but make their other shareholders feel better about the company. But at the same time, I think there's a better way to invest right now. So BRW for sure. I like these two companies because they focus on, they focus on similar stuff, but they're very different in size. Uh, but they're, they both rank extremely high with fixed income. And whether we get one rate cut or three rate cuts in the next several months, I still like this play. Uh, long term, so beyond this week, and what I'm working, or say what I'm considering, I am, and this is our individual brokerage account. Uh, I am considering selling this, not necessarily because of the loss. I mean, th this portfolio has a high fixed income rate also, but it hasn't performed well. And I can only attribute it to Aberdeen. Uh, Aberdeen's got maybe 14 different funds right now. I want to say I read an article last week about them not having an actual fund manager. Uh, and the article was pretty, I want to say it didn't pull any punches. Uh, they're not competing in the market at large. And until they hire an actual fund manager, then it's going to be hard for them to compete. That being said, we still have two Aberdeen funds. So they, we've started with this fund, uh, and then they bought out this fund and its sister company. Uh, this one has done okay because they increased the dividend. And if we really are bound for a recession, I'm curious how the price will swing on that. But this one, where we go? Here. This one I'm considering selling. Uh, the other is this one. Now, I get it. Y'all know I like NBSG, but it gives me an, a good transition time. It gives me gives me time to. I mean, yeah, you can split hairs. This is what it used to be, so that was its overall ROI. Uh, that's. I mean, yeah, that's different, but that's not much different. But we can collect our um, our cash return. I mean, that's our, this is our total return. 
we can collect our upside and then I can withdraw the money out because I can't just same service. I can't withdraw and add back to another account. I, so I got to sell it, withdraw from here, drop it in my bank account, move it over into the Roth. But it's kind of a good time because if the price is going to continue to slide or if it if it just goes up and down all week with no real change, not a big deal. And if it goes back up crazy soon, that's okay too because it'll dip again at some point. But it gives us opportunity to continue to liquidate this tax-based account and load it back into a non-taxed account. So we it's kind of like we take our return and between this one and the other one, we load it in here. And I mean, quite honestly, we could buy I mean, we'll see what the end of the week, we'll see what, we'll see how the week plays out in the volatility in the market. But maybe at that time, maybe it'd be a good week or a good time to buy more tech, more MBXG and then add ETW. We'll see. Maybe it'll be that way, that way next week. I don't know. But for Monday, Monday, the plan is this. We will finally buy. We'll pick up 50 here. We'll pick up 100 there. And we will sell NBXG. And we will sell fax and end up adding more money hopefully by end of week we'll see how we'll see how fast all those transactions take or at least the withdrawal side of things but we'll add more money into this roth account so high fixed income bonds in general uh not so much high fixed income kind of middle of the road on the high fixed income percentage but bonds closed in funds um, I like the shareholder activist account, uh, and it is a backdoor investment in the crypto. So that's what I got. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's what I got. So those are my two top selections for the week. If you like the content, consider subscribing to my channel and then hit the like button. And you can actually check on me in the next video and make sure that I went ahead and bought those funds. Essentially, hold me accountable to what I'm um, you're holding me accountable based on what I'm telling you I'm going to do. And you can also hold me accountable based on how everything does in general. Uh, so whatever you have for the week, whatever you have, I hope it goes well. And whatever your strategy is, I hope that goes well too. And if you don't know what your strategy is, then we should probably talk and just see if we can outline something for you. Right. And if you want to know about the 12 steps to financial freedom, then come check me out on Facebook. I am working on a book for that so I can get into the 12 steps, but then I can really detail out uh, really every, yes, the 12 steps, but on the investment side of things, I can really detail out and get into the strategy and the code of using our closed end fund system. So whatever you have, I hope it goes well. Whatever dreams are on your horizon, I hope I hope you reach them. But you've got to you've got to remember those dreams, as far out as they exist, they aren't going to happen on your own, right? Or they're not going to happen on their own. You've got to reach them and then surpass them, right? So get out there and make it happen. This is Daniel Young signing off. I will see you all on another video. Hope you have a great week. Bye bye.